Williamson commissioners, I welcome the opportunity to appear before you today on behalf of the National Association of Manufacturers. The NAM is the largest industrial trade association in the United States, representing manufacturers small and big in all 50 states. Across the country, manufacturing employs nearly 12 million women and men and accounts for two-thirds of private sector research and development. Manufacturing contributes more than $1.8 trillion to the U.S. economy annually and has the largest economic impact of any sector. The NAM's primary objective is to promote policies that enable our manufacturers to compete successfully in an ever-changing global economy. At home, we seek outcomes on tax, infrastructure, innovation, workforce, and other issues that will attract manufacturing growth. From an international perspective, the NAM is a leader in promoting open markets, new trade promotion authority legislation, and trade and investment agreements in Asia and Europe and beyond that will eliminate barriers and set in place core rules of non-discrimination and fairness. And we work to make sure that all governments, including our own, play by the rules. Manufacturers in the United States have long been partners in India's growth and development. As India pursued economic reforms launched in the 1990s and opened important new sectors to investment, manufacturers expanded bilateral commercial ties and have sought to grow commercial partnerships. We continue to hear some positive stories. For example, in the defense and aerospace sector, as Ron mentioned, there have been continued growth in partnerships. The initial sale of six Lockheed Martin C-130Js delivered to India in 2011 was the first major U.S. military sale with India and served as a powerful symbol of our strategic partnership. This past December, the Indian government signed a contract for six additional aircraft, a strong indicator of that program's success. Air India, Jet Airways, and SpiceJet have been long-standing Boeing customers who also report success in the Indian market. Boeing is also a major supplier on the defense side and reports in its own submission to the ITC that it is the largest U.S. exporter to India with a 70-year relationship. Yet most of the issues that have been raised to us in this past year have not been ones of success. Indeed, the NAM's focus on India has grown substantially as a result of increasing and widespread concerns across a number of different manufacturing industries that India is aggressively implementing a more strident industrial policy that has as, as its core the discrimination against foreign manufacturers and our products. As I listen to my colleagues who just spoke on this panel, I must offer a different perspective on what is going on now in India. The concerns that, be, that are being raised by many manufacturers in the United States are significant, widespread, across industry sector, and appear, unless action is taken, to be systemic in nature with highly negative impacts on U.S. manufacturers and workers. While India has certainly undertaken reform in the last two decades and is continuing to do so, do so in some areas, India is by no means an open or liberalized economy. This is not just my assessment. As cited in my written statement, numerous U.S. government reports year after year detailed widespread concerns of India's discriminatory and access-limiting policies. Consider as well the World Economic Forum's Global Trade Enabling Report from 2012 that found that India had dropped from 84th place to 100th in terms of its trade enabling environment. On market access, India was ranked 100 out of 132 countries, a finding that prompted the World Economic Forum to indicate that, quote, India remains one of the most protected economies in the entire sample. Overall, U.S. exports to India face an average applied tariff of more than 13 percent, over six times higher than U.S. duties on Indian goods. Little wonder that U.S. exports to India have inched along over the past decade, while India's sales to the United States have grown tenfold to nearly $40 billion in 2013, contributing to a nearly $19 billion manufactured goods trade deficit for the full year of 2013. The simple fact is U.S. manufactured goods access to India is limited, and this has a negative impact on manufacturing and employment in the United States. In line with its 2011 national manufacturing policy, India is also undertaking a wide series of actions that seek to limit access to foreign products and foreign in innovation. There's a litany of problems that I cited in my written statement and, and have been raised by other business representatives to this panel. Beyond tariffs, we see many examples, including India's imposition of export taxes on raw materials that effectively subsidize their domestic steel industry, the fifth largest in the world. 
India's requirement that commercial developers of solar project, projects use only solar modules and cells manufactured in India is a blat in blatant contravention of its WTO and GATT obligations. The U.S. has challenged uh, those provisions both in February of 2013 and just earlier this week. India's on-again and off-again preferences for its domestic information technology industry that have already been discussed in an earlier panel and a bit by Ron, India's actions in this place, though, have placed a huge chill on the ability of U.S. and other foreign manufacturers to actually access this market. Add India's intrusive facility inspection that put sensitive trade secrets and other intellectual properties at risk and that are out of line with international standards. As you have heard and will hear later in the second panel today, India has denied, revoked, and compulsory licensed patent for more than a dozen innovative medicines designed to treat cancer, diabetes, and chronic diseases. This includes medicines that were distributed in <coughs> India free of charge or sold at a small fraction of their cost in the United States. India bans imports of remanufactured medical imaging devices and other equipment while allowing sales of such equipment as long as it's remanufactured in India. And the list goes on, as you will hear from my fellow panelists that, on this panel. The combined effect of India's industrial policies is to block or prevent imports of a growing range of manufactured goods from the United States and other countries. The actual and potential impact of these policies is significant. An analysis by the Peterson Institute estimated that just one kind of industrial policy tool maintained by India and other countries, local content rules, reduced world trade by $93 billion annually. At a time when global trade has been stubbornly slow to rebound from pre-recession levels, eliminating industrial policies implemented through local content rules and other means could have a huge impact on welfare and India and around the world. Policies that deny manufacturers in the United States the chance to compete abroad put at risk today's jobs and tomorrow's opportunities. Exports are a critical engine of growth and job creation for businesses large and small. A recent Brookings Institute report found that exports accounted for more than half of output growth in the 100 largest US metro areas between 2009 and 2012. According to the Commerce Department, Two of every nine manufacturing jobs are tied to exports. These effects are compounded by the size and influence of India's economy and the nature of the sector's harm. With nearly 20% of the world's consumers in growing international profile, the effect of India's discriminatory policies are all the more devastating for manufacturing and jobs in the United States. India's industrial policies not only harm overseas businesses selling to customers in that country, but also provide an unfortunate example for other governments to follow. Already, countries like Brazil, India, Russia, and South Africa are adopting similar policies aimed at forcing local production of telecommunications equipment, medicines, including through local testing, and forced localization of storage of electronic data. India's policies also target sectors that are critical to sustaining and growing innovative manufacturing in the United States. High value added sectors like telecommunications, clean energy, pharmaceuticals, and medical devices are research and capital intensive and highly dependent on international trade. They support jobs on the shop floor and in many services professions. According to McKinsey, every dollar of manufacturing output in the United States entails 19 cents in services. India's industrial policies are inconsistent with international norms and several appear to directly violate India's obligations in the World Trade Organization, including provisions of the GATT and the Uruguay Round that prohibit local content. As a founding member of the GATT that India helped establish these fundamental rules of national treatment some 65 years ago. The U.S. government and manufacturers in the United States have repeatedly expressed serious concerns about India's industrial policies and have sought dialogue and change. Last summer, the NAM and 16 other trade associations formed the Alliance for Fair Trade with India, AFTI, to highlight the need for action. We need to talk about these issues, not sweep them under the rug. We need to find actual solutions to these many issues if we are going to grow the type of constructive partnership with India that my colleagues keep wanting to talk about. While some discriminatory policies have been put on hold as a result of these dialogues, there remains and continues widespread discrimination against exports from the United States and the lack of any real dialogue. 
The NAM commends the Senate Finance Committee and House Ways and Means Committee for requesting this investigation and looks forward to working with all of you, the Congress and the administration, on a report that accurately describes the impacts and helps us define what actions are necessary to put the U.S.-India relationship on an even and fair heel. Thank you. Thank you.